Well, a recent ruling of Fair Work Australia held that two consultants were employees, despite being paid by invoices addressed to their business name. Fair Work Australia confirmed that when determining an individual's employment status, various factors are to be considered, which can include the ability to perform work for others and the ability to delegate or subcontract work. And for more on this, I am joined by Joy Deep Hort, Managing Director at People and Culture Strategies. Joy Deep, this will send a, a shock of fear through a lot of employers out there who, who think they're doing the right thing and employ these independent contractors and, and could end up getting in trouble. Absolutely, and I think important to understand the, the context in which this decision has, has come about. Uh, the Fair Work Act says that to bring an unfair dismissal claim you have to be an employee and also says that small businesses are exempt from unfair dismissal claims. So if you employ less than 15 employees, uh, you're in the clear as far as unfair dismissal claims are concerned. In determining that number, what happened in this particular case was an employer said, well, we've got less than 15 employees, right. but the individual that was bringing the claim said, hang on a second, you've actually got these two people who you're labelling as consultants or contractors okay. who I want to argue are employees, therefore for having been successful, that number went above the 15, making that employee eligible to bring a claim against that particular organisation. Right, so in that case you can see the motivator for the business in terms of keeping that number below 15, but there are some other benefits that businesses reap from employing contractors as opposed to full-time staff, holidays, etc. Absolutely. I think there's, a, there's an understandable, understandable commercial uh, imperative for a lot of organisations, particularly when economic times are a bit challenging, you want a bit more flexibility. By the same token, there's plenty of upside for these individuals who are providing services mm -hmm. through a corporate vehicle by way of income splitting and, and other things that they may be lawfully entitled to do. But what is often overlooked is uh, there's too much attention paid within business to the label. So they think that if you create a document, for example, that labels a working relationship as a contractor and principal relationship, that's enough to get you over the line. And the Fair Work Australia context is just one example of where it could mm. be problematic. You've got superannuation issues, income tax issues, more broad compliance with your obligations under awards and enterprise agreements. So the ramifications of it are potentially disastrous for organisations who don't take the time to reflect properly on the actual working relationships as opposed to the label. And let's talk about some of those factors. You say it's not just about the label, it's also about things like subcontracting. Correct. I think a lot of organisations at the moment make the mistake of thinking, well, if they're not on our payroll and they issue us an invoice, they might complete a timesheet, but they invoice us weekly or monthly or whatever it, it is, therefore it's obviously not an employment relationship and, and that's not the case. So you do look at invoicing arrangements, certainly, but you have to look at the way in which the work is performed. And what's really interesting about this case was that certainly one of the two individuals was actually providing services to other organisations. But in spite of that, Fair Work Australia said, even though it wasn't exclusive, it was still an employment relationship because you can actually have multiple employment relationships. A person can be employed by more than one entity. So you look at the, the working arrangements actually in place and you look at the dynamics between the two organisations. So the employer or principal, look at how they are delegating work to that particular worker. Does it smack of being an employment relationship because that principal or employer can direct that person as to how they do their work? Do they have regular start times? Are they on the, uh, the, the company's intranet? Do they have their own email address set up on the company system? All of these things make them look like an employee. So let's talk about some of the factors. As you say, this can be a, a mutually beneficial relationship. If the contractor likes it and the employer likes it, what are the things they need to look through and shore up to, to make sure that this is, I guess, clean cut? I think if they want a genuine contractor relationship, uh, they need to make sure that the person is working flexibly. Mm -hmm. The person has as much say in the provision of services as the person who's asking for the services to be performed. Right. The person should be ideally using their own um, tools if we're talking about perhaps more manual tasks. Um, the person should not be subject to the direction and control mm -hmm. of the principal or employer and, and they shouldn't be remunerated in a way that your employees are, for example bonuses and, and all of those kinds of things. I mean up to now we've always said that it's a good in indicator of a contract relationship if they're working for a number of people at the same time. In light of this decision, we might need to take stock of that. Yeah, so does this decision change a lot of things for you when you look at these kind of cases or will you be looking at them in a, in a similar way? As no, I, I think this issue has been a risk area for a, a long time. I think this particular decision just takes that risk a couple of yeah. steps.
steps further and, and increases the requirement for employers to audit these kinds of arrangements they've got in place because the consequences could be quite severe. Yeah, they sound like it. Joy D. Paul, we do thank you for your time today. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate it. We'll moving on to one of our top corporate stories this morning. Qantas reportedly edging closer to a deal with Emirates to transform its struggling international business. The Financial Review says Qantas